Today we talk about using your Morningstar controller as a powerful foot controller for your digital audio workstation and music software. Morningstar controllers are the perfect controller for your software because they can send both MIDI messages and keystroke commands. MIDI allows you to MIDI map any controls you want to your Morningstar controller, and keystrokes allow your Morningstar controller to send keyboard commands and shortcuts to your computer with your feet. Right now I'm going to show you how I have my MC8 set up to control Ableton Live, and then I will walk you through how to set up the controls that I have. Of course, everything is fully customizable, so you can set your controller up any way you like, but this will give you a good idea of what you can do. Here I have bank 1 on my MC8 set up to control Ableton. Every bank on your Morningstar controller has two pages, and I have used both of them to control Ableton. Let's start with page 1. On the rightmost switches, I have up and down controls. These allow me to scroll up and down through my scenes and highlight them. Once I've selected the scene I want to launch, I can just hit the launch button here on the left and the highlighted scene will start playing. With this, I can then scroll to whichever scene I want to launch next to cue it. And when the time comes to change scenes, I can just hit launch and the next scene will start playing when the next bar begins. And here I have switch G set up to launch the next scene with a single switch press. This is really handy. So what happens when I press this is the next scene below my current position will get highlighted and start playing when the next bar begins, all with just one press. And on the bottom left here, I have programmed left and right switches. These allow me to scroll through my different tracks. Combined with the up and down switches, it also allows me to select specific clips. This is useful because it allows us to select different clips and we are able to see the different notes that are recorded for each clip. And as long as you have a MIDI keyboard or pad controller connected to Ableton, your tracks will automatically be armed as you scroll left and right. This makes it super handy to use your foot to arm or record whichever instrument you want, allowing you to perform and overdub on the fly. Speaking of recording, I have a session record switch program here on the top left switch. When I hit it, Ableton will start recording over my highlighted clip and I can lay down more notes. And when I hit record again, recording will stop but the track will continue to play. This allows me to overdub on the fly. And on switch F here, I have the enable disable switch program. This allows me to enable or disable my current selected clips or tracks, so I can use my navigation switches to highlight the clip or track I want and enable or disable it with my feet. Now moving on to the second page of the same bank, I have the bottom row of switches programmed to trigger four different scenes. This allows me to jump around and launch whichever scene I want with just one tap. And on the top left, I have a stop switch that will stop all clips when I press it. Here I have a view switch. This allows me to toggle between session and arrangement views on Ableton, which is pretty handy. And I have programmed switch G to toggle on and off the delay on my lead instrument. Lastly, I have switch H set up to toggle on and off my filter drive for my lead instrument too. And I also have an expression pedal set up to control a low pass filter on my lead instrument. I've also set the knob takeover mode to pick up, so that even when I adjust my settings on screen, my expression pedal will not cause the values to jump. The expression pedal will only start affecting the parameter when it catches on to the current value. More details about this later. So that's how I have my control set up. Now let's show you how it's done. In this video, we are using Ableton as our DAW of choice. But of course, Morningstar controllers are USB class compliant and work with any music software with no drivers required. It's just that we already have Ableton, so we are using it in this video. Regardless, the workflow and setup will be very similar for any DAW because they all employ MIDI mapping and keystrokes for external control. Step 1. Connect your Morningstar controller to your computer via USB. Morningstar controllers can be USB powered, so no other power source is necessary. Step 2. In Ableton, open up MIDI preferences and make sure that input remote is turned on for your Morningstar controller. This allows Ableton to receive MIDI and keystroke messages from your Morningstar controller. This is crucial, or else communication cannot take place. Take note that Ableton receives MIDI via channel 1 by default, so all MIDI messages in this video will be sent via MIDI channel 1. And that's it, you're ready to start. Let's start with the up, down, left and right navigation switches on page 1. These are simply keystroke commands. To set each of these up, you just need to choose a press action and select keystroke for your message type. You'll see the options to add modifiers to your keystrokes. Modifiers are keys such as shift, option, function and command on your keyboard, depending on whether you are a Mac or Windows user. For example, if I were to select the control modifier and keystroke Z, it would be like pressing control Z on your computer, which is usually undo. However, we don't need to add any modifiers for the navigation keys. All we need to do is use the directional arrow keys. For the left switch, we just need to select left arrow and for the right switch, we just need to select right arrow. No modifiers required. For the scene up and scene down switches, we just need to do the same but using the up arrow and down arrow keystrokes. Really simple. Also, be sure to click on the Ableton window specifically on one of the tracks so your computer will respond to keystroke commands on Ableton. 
Now, moving on to the scene launch switch. This switch is simply sending a CC message, which we have mapped to Ableton Live using MIDI mapping. MIDI mapping is the method used by almost all DAWs and music software to assign software controls, such as on-screen buttons, knobs, and sliders to a physical MIDI controller. This gives you a lot of flexibility to control anything you want with any switch you want. In this example, I'm using CC number 13 for the launch switch. Remember to use a value of 127 for switch on, Value 0 will execute switch off, which is not what we want in this case. Name the switch launch with long name scene launched. This will give us some nice visual feedback when we press the switch to let us know when the scene has been launched. Once that's done, we can now MIDI map the launch function to the switch. To do that, just click on MIDI on the top right corner of Ableton Live. This will put Ableton into MIDI map mode and will reveal the scene launch button on the bottom right over here. All you have to do then is click on that and then press the switch we have programmed. And just like that, the scene launch function has now been mapped to this switch. It's that easy. And now let's move to the launch next scene switch. I've added a small letter V representing a downward arrow to indicate that this switch launches the next scene and these are the settings that you need. You'll see that this switch actually has the same message as our standard scene launch switch, CC number 13, with just two additional messages stacked on top of it. The first message is a down arrow keystroke that will move down a row and highlight the next scene. The second message is just a delay inserted between our first and third messages. We found that this is necessary or Ableton would not respond to the message after the first message. Messages on your Morningstar controller are sent in sequence, so in this case it's as if we are pressing a downward arrow key and then hitting scene launch. And that's it, hitting this switch allows us to launch our next scene with just a single switch press. Super cool. Next we have the enable disable switch. This one's really simple, it's just sending a keystroke command of zero, that's the Ableton keystroke command to enable or disable a highlighted clip or track. We've linked the whole list of Ableton keystroke commands in the description below, so you can check out what's possible with keystrokes. And for the last switch on page 1, the session record switch. This switch is just sending CC number 15 with value 127 in toggle position 1 and value 0 in toggle position 2. This allows you to toggle record on and off with a single switch. If you are not yet familiar with using the toggle function on your Morningstar controller, check out this video. To get the session record function working, just MIDI map the switch to the session record button over here. Be sure to map it to the session record button and not the global record button as what we want to do is record session clips, not record on your track arrangement. Now moving on to page 2 of this bank. For the 4 scene switches at the bottom, each of these are just sending CC numbers 21, 22, 23 and 24 respectively, all with value 127. And each of these are MIDI mapped to each of the scene launch buttons in Ableton. For the stop switch on the top left, it's just sending CC number 25, MIDI mapped to the stop all clips button on Ableton that becomes visible when you are in MIDI map mode. This switch is also mapped to the global stop button on Ableton so that it stops everything when pressed. Yes, you can map one CC number to multiple parameters on Ableton if you wish. Next, the view switch is simply sending a tap keystroke message that toggles between session and arrangement views. It's super simple. The delay and filter drive switches are simply sending unique CC numbers with value 127 in toggle position 1 and value 0 in toggle position 2, allowing you to toggle the delay effect on and off with a single switch. Similar to the session record switch earlier, just map this switch to the effect device's engage or bypass button on Ableton for it to work. And now we move on to our expression pedal. If you are not sure how to set up an expression pedal with your Morningstar controller yet, watch this video first. What I've done is simply programmed my expression pedal to send CC message 1 with a value range from 0 to 127 to get a full sweep of control. Then all you need to do is click on the frequency knob on Ableton and move your expression pedal. The knob and your expression pedal are now linked. To prevent your knob values from jumping when you move your expression pedal, Make sure you select Pickup for your takeover mode under your MIDI preferences. That way the expression pedal will only start taking effect when it catches onto the current knob value. A very important note, before using your Morningstar controller to control Ableton, make sure you click on Disconnect Device on the Morningstar editor first. When in editor mode, keystroke messages will not be sent. Once again, remember to click on one of the tracks in your Ableton window. This is so your computer will respond to keystroke commands on Ableton and not for any other application you may have open at the same time. Software plays a big part in our musical journeys and having a controller that controls both hardware and software is definitely invaluable. If you found this video useful, please do remember to like this video and subscribe for all the latest content and updates. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Thank you.